uh, and uh, probably a better global governance would have been able to put on the table uh, the uh, issue of the global imbalances and maybe try to solve it before uh, the uh, crisis uh, uh, struck. Now, these are the functions that we're expecting from, for global governance. Now, who is doing what in the prison system? Uh, regulation, to a large extent, I would say this is based without uh, any job in Basel, uh, uh, with uh, the uh, International Bank for uh, Settlement, uh, uh, the Bank for International Settlement, sorry, and uh, all its uh, satellites, different satellites, the last one being the uh, FSB, uh, created or expanded by the uh, uh, G20. Uh, insurance intervention at the global level, I would say, does not exist. It does not exist, basically, because there is no international actor which has the size uh, needed to do any kind of credible intervention in uh, the markets uh, so that it would be possible to counteract forces in the global economy that would lead the global economy in a wrong direction. So this is a function which is basically uncovered. Uh, smoothing, post-crisis smoothing, to a large extent, is being done by the IMF and by the World Bank and by the uh, regional development banks. And we, are, we just saw in 2009 the role that those institutions can play uh, for helping uh, developing countries and emerging countries uh, going through uh, the, uh, the, 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 the crisis. And coordination really is, again, something which is not uh, ensured by any uh, actor it is uh, left to the uh, various uh, individual actors in the global economy, essentially to the uh, uh, countries and more uh, uh, to, the, to the G20. Uh, but as with uh, financial regulations uh, uh, decided by those uh, entities in Basel, uh, the G20 is uh, only a concertation uh, body. Uh, which means that there is no uniform decision being taken there. There is no way that uh, those entities can uh, impose to uh, global actors a rule or uh, a way to behave or policies to follow uh, in, any, uh, in any way. So from that point of view, we are very, very far from governance in, at the national level. There is definitely something which is missing in the uh, global governance system. So, uh, in summary, you can see that many functions are simply not uh, covered. Uh, and uh, finally, the main actors, which are the international financial institutions, have a very limited role. The role is analytic. It is always very nice to listen to the uh, world economic outlook by the fund or the economic prospect by the World Bank, which says something about what may happen. And uh, this is certainly part of the uh, uh, coordination uh, 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 goal, uh, but this, is, this has absolutely no direct uh, uh, impact. It's only an indirect impact. They have a role has in smoothing the shocks uh, felt by uh, uh, countries. Uh, and we can also say that there are vectors of coordination. Anybody who attended the uh, IMF uh, uh, committee or uh, the World Bank Development Committee knows that, in general, there are uh, quite uh, intensive discussions on uh, uh, hot issues in uh, those uh, 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 meetings, uh, which, as a matter of fact, are very, very similar to a G20 meeting. Now, this is the situation today. Uh, now, we may ask, okay, if this is uh, uh, the situation, what is the role of those uh, financial institutions, the uh, bank and the fund? I will not spend very much time on, the, on this. I uh, simply wanted to, to mention the fact that uh, with time, the, uh, and if we for a moment uh, get out of a crisis uh, context, to look at uh, a more uh, steady state uh, view at the way in which uh, the uh, whole system works, I think it is quite important to notice that the uh, financing role uh, that uh, was uh, uh, the uh, priority of uh, the uh, IMF and the World Bank of all these institutions is declining over time. And it is quite uh, uh, amazing to see uh, how quick this is uh, uh, going. Uh, I wanted to cite some uh, figures, uh, but uh, 
probably the fact that just before the crisis, the fund had decided to downsize and to uh, contract employment by 15 percent is uh, probably the best illustration of the fact that in normal times, uh, those institutions uh, are uh, doing much less than before. Now, what does that mean? Does this mean that now we have to consider the fund and uh, the various uh, uh, international banks, uh, development banks, to be uh, signing checks when there is a crisis and then making sure that uh, those checks are being repaid uh, uh, in time? Or is there another role to be played by those uh, institutions? My view is that there is another role, and this role is very much about uh, uh, technical uh, assistance and uh, uh, spreading knowledge about development to the rest of the world. But time is very short, so let me conclude with the final point that I wanted to make, which is about uh, uh, environmental uh, issues and the CO2 <coughs> and the climate change issues. Uh, this is a bad time. Copenhagen has definitely uh, been a failure from uh, many points of view, and uh, it is not because there was an accord uh, uh, which was a, a, a sign at the end that uh, uh, this is a, a success. Now, one of the, uh, the, the problem with uh, Copenhagen and the problem with climate change is that this is the most obvious case of the need for global governance. We have an externality. We know that this externality must be uh, uh, cured, must be uh, mitigated by the adequate policy. And this policy must be applied at, uh, over the whole world. Uh, there is no way we can say that a few countries, like the EU, will start reducing emissions uh, and uh, we start uh, with a carbon tax if at the same time we know that uh, uh, industries will go uh, to, uh, be, uh, to uh, settle elsewhere. The point there is that to a large extent this is a global issue. All the countries must have the same kind of regulation. And what is interesting, and this is the link with uh, the global financial governance, it is the fact that it is an issue, to some extent, of regulation. We might solve the whole uh, environmental problem through a carbon tax, but the carbon tax would have to be the same in all countries in the world, and there would be no need for a global tax authority. We would simply ask all the countries to tax carbon and to get the receipts, uh, of the tax receipts and to do whatever they want with these tax receipts. So there is no need to create anything new. It is exactly the same thing as a common regulation uh, in all countries in the world. And from that point of view, the problem is the same as with the uh, financial uh, reporting standards and, the, and, and, and things like that. Now, you may say that on top of that, I mean, okay, I know that carbon tax is not exactly the same thing as emission permits, as a cap and trade. Okay, let's not get into technicalities. There is, of course, a lot of uh, similarity between cap and trade and, and, and a tax. And the tax is better understood by uh, all economists and probably all people in the world than the cap and trade. Now, the second point about uh, this is that there is a need, at the same time that there is this common regulation, maybe we want to consider redistribution uh, across countries because it is true that uh, even though uh, the tax receipts are spent within the country, it may be the case that these distortional prices will be slowing down growth, slowing down development in some countries. So it is completely uh, natural that their uh, redistribution issue would, uh, uh, would arise. And uh, what the bad thing is, is that in Copenhagen, the issue was only redistribution. The issue was not what has to be done to fight the emission, the issue was about the way in which the burden, which we didn't know what it was, would be uh, distributed. And this is where I believe that there is a link between global financial governance and, uh, and uh, global governance in the environmental sphere, in the sense that this redistribution of income across countries <coughs> is something that uh, uh, the international financial institutions have been doing for quite some time, and to some extent, they are really equipped to deal with this kind of issue. So we might very well think that the mission of the uh, financial institutions, which seem to be uh, uh, completely uh, at the end of a uh, 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 process, of the development process, we might think that there is a kind of renewal 
uh, which uh, may come uh, through this uh, uh, other dimension of global governance. So I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francois. Thank you, Francois. Thank you.